world and realize before long that we haven't done what he asked us to do. If we can stay focused, if we can stay in his word, I can almost assure you that he will make sure we get done what he called us to do. Amen? Amen. I read to you from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, the well-known story of Abraham and Isaac. I often look at that as saying, I don't know around Many of you have been called to make a choice. I know even that you love the Lord. It's hard to choose the Lord over your son or your daughter. And here we have a man who was called out of nowhere to follow a God somewhere right. that was going to give him everything. Yeah. All right. and, and here now that same God is telling him to take the son that he was promised and to lay him on an altar and to stab him to death. Something's just not right with that picture. And as I used to study this, I, I think I, I, I got caught up in the drop. And today I'm going to try to refocus you because as we look at the names of God and getting to know who God is, it's important that we understand that God is known through his characteristics. I mean, we've already talked about Elohim, the God that created everything. And then we talked about Adonai, the God who is Lord of Lords. And just the last time we were together, we talked about Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. There's two Jehovah's I get confused. Jehovah Shalom. There's also a Jehovah Shiloh. We're talking about Jehovah Shalom, who is the God that gives you the peace that passes all understanding. See, we know who God is because of what he does and because of the things that he brings to his people. And it's important that we take time to know this because late in the midnight hour, Satan doesn't fight fair. Late in the midnight hour, he comes to uh, get inside of your head and let you think that the God you serve is a one-faceted God. But I'm so glad that the God I serve is multi-faceted. He has so many facets. He's like a diamond, each facet reflecting his light and his holiness even more intensely than the one next to it. And it's important that we acknowledge the need to have a more intimate awareness of who God is. Right. See, sometimes when you meet God, you look into your psyche, you look into what you have at hand, and you realize that you have not. You have nothing. And so it's important that we continue on our study. I was reading a story in my study time this week about an old man. He was uh, trapped on the top of a roof next to a lake that had overflowed because the dam was about to bust. And this old man, he stood on the, on the uh, side of the roof and he was hollering down to the people, don't worry about me, my God is going to save me. And people looked at him and thought he was crazy and, and so the one rescue guy, he, he, he called the helicopter over. And the helicopter came over, he dropped down a ladder, and an old man waved him off. He said, no, Papa, my God is going to take care of my needs. And so another time, uh, when a boat came up with a, the rescue squad, and they said, come on, you need to come with us. <coughs> and the man said, no, I'm okay. My God is going to take care of me. And then a power boat sped out of nowhere and came and tried to get the man to leave his post. And the man said, go away. God is going to take care of me. And at the last minute, <clears throat> the rain had came so hard that the rain had almost overtaken his whole house. And as he stood at the crest of the house, a dog that looked like Lassie, 
come swimming by. Yeah. And he had dragging behind him a life jacket. Yeah. And the man, he knew what it was all about. He told, he told the dog, don't worry, my God got me. Yeah. And right at that moment, the dam broke. And a big wave washed over the man's house and took him out to the sea. And the man drowned. But because the man was saved, the man woke up in heaven. And when he woke up in heaven, he looked at God and he was so disappointed. He said, God, I did what you told me to do. I trusted in you. I believed in you. I did what you told me to do. Why didn't you come and give me what I needed? Yeah, I looked there and said, wait a minute. I said, I have a camera, a rowboat, a powerboat, and even Lassie. He, don't you have a problem with that? See, some of us, we're just like that man. We're looking for a blessing in all the wrong places. God is blessing you, and none of you not acknowledge it. You don't even recognize that you've been blessed. Oh, I'm telling you, as I was looking over this text for uh, the stuff talking about God, the provider, he let me know that we need to spend less time looking for four-leaf clothes yes, yes. and more time realizing that three-leaf clothes are beautiful, too. And there are far, far more three-leaf clothes than there are four. There are far more horses than there are unicorns. And see, we can be blessed by God in a whisper of his wind. And yet you're looking for a crashing thunder and a mighty roar from heaven. And God blessed you because you had more money than you had money. Sometimes you need to take time to realize that God does provide for your needs. I know we're a nation of consumers. We're a nation that everybody wants to have it now. And you know, lately because the uh, because thank you so much <clears throat> because the the uh, the interest rates are so low, everybody says have it your way, zero uh, percent interest. Come and get this car, no money down. But 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 before you realize it, you're paying for a piece of merchandise for eight and nine years. I remember when car payments used to take 36 months. <laughs> and they would say, that's a long one. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's nothing to have an 84-month car payment. Right. But it still uh, doesn't negate the fact that if we believe in God, he will provide. Yeah. You see, I, I, that's what I'm here to talk about today. The God that provides. Je Jehovah Jireh is his name. God, our provider. And it's one of those compound names of God where it, it takes Yahweh and it puts it with another attribute. That attribute is called Jireh. And that word Jireh means that God sees. And I, I'm reminded as I look at the scripture that we studied today that it wasn't just that God provides, but it was that God saw the need to provide even before there was a need. And see, sometimes we need to understand that God is so far more intense than we are. That he knows what we're going to need even before we need it. Some of you are sitting there now looking and waiting for God to deliver something to you. Well, I can tell you that he's able. He's able to do more than you can even ask or think. And that's why we're talking today about Jehovah Jireh. I, got a, I feel a tremendous need to tell you what happened to me this week because uh, when I look back over uh, the week and I, as I was preparing for this message, I said, God, every time I study one of your names, it seems that that week you bring that name all over me. And this week was no different. I, when I went up to my job on Monday, I went to, up to uh, North Jersey. And I got there and you know things weren't going too well and I really was having a bad day. And so I said I'm gonna treat myself to a decent dinner. And so uh, I didn't know I, I said I'd go to IHOP. But you know what? IHOP's not a decent dinner. But anyway, I, I, I said, you know what? In Newark, they have a Portuguese section. 
And they had really good food in New York, Washington. She said, yeah, yeah. And now I know how to get the North about as much as I know how to get the Rose name. But, but I tried anyway. And I just started towards Newark. And I found the restaurant that I wanted. Not only did I find the restaurant that I wanted, but when I pulled into the parking lot, I got the very last parking spot in the lot. Tell me God doesn't provide. You see, when we think about blessing, we don't realize that I could have had to keep my car on the road, but God provided a spot for me. And I thought about it, even Tuesday, when I went on, I was out on a, a bunch of sales calls, and everything seemed to go well. But Tuesday night, it was like, man, my whole body just locked up on me. And I said, wait, wait, wait a minute. This can't be good. But then I realized that God had let me go 400 miles and come back before I got sick. So see, he's Jehovah Jireh. He's, he's the God who provides. And then on Wednesday morning, it was even more incredible because I was already mad because I had a staff that uh, that audited that, that signed us up for an audit that we weren't ready for, and I was fussing it, running around there and acting unchristian like you know. <laughs> But anyway, the auditor came, and not only did he came, he gave us a superior rating. You can't tell me that God does not supply our needs. And I looked at that and I'm saying, God, if I just believe you, and I'm studying to preach Jehovah Jireh. And then I'm sitting there and I said, I start to shake a little bit. And I'm 138 miles from home. I said, man, I, I, I got to cut and run. Because if I don't do something, they're going to put me in the hospital up here. So I got in my car and I started praying and driving. And it seemed like the more I drove, the slower traffic got. <laughs> oh, I, and I mean, I'm starting to shake more now. And, and I got to stop and get water and go to the bathroom. And I'm really starting to get sicker and sicker. And I'm praying and I'm praying. And before I knew it, I was home. And I walked in that house and I said, God, you are awesome. Yes. 138 miles you, you took me. But usually took me two and a half hours. Took me almost four hours. I should have been mad, but I realized that if it had not been for that traffic, I'd have been trying to run 65 and 75 miles an hour with hands that were shaking with legs that couldn't quite get to the break. But God sought to slow everything down. Tell me about Jehovah Jireh. See, every now and then you have to realize that God blesses you even when you don't want to be blessed. And that's when I said, God, I'm going to tell them about what you do in my life. Because, see, when I got home, it really jumped on me. And I went upstairs and I got into bed and I started I'm not having many of these just slitting and slitting and slitting. And, 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 and um, it was almost like I could see my life leaving my body. And I said, God, I, 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 I don't want to go. And I can hear the Spirit of the Lord say, don't worry, son. I got many things for you to do. Even when we are frightened, Jehovah Shiva provides for us. And see, it's time that we understand that the God that provides will always provide for us. And here we're in the story of Abraham and Isaac. Here we have a, a man who was a hundred years old, had a baby boy. And now God was telling him to kill this baby boy. If you were Abraham, I don't know what I would have done. But I know I wouldn't have been as composed as Abraham because he just knew that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. And so Abraham, he didn't balk. He didn't fuss. He didn't get all up in God's face. He just got the step. And see, a lot of times our blessings are blocked because we don't do what he asked us to do. 
There's somebody here that knows what I'm talking about. There's somebody here that God has asked you to do something, is asking you to do something, and you still have not done it, and yet you wonder why you have not been blessed. All right. But see, Abraham knew that nothing else, it was time to do what God said to do. And I'm telling you, it was a, it was a, a, a wonderful thing to watch him uh, get a new revelation, you see. Because even before Abraham got to Mount Moriah, he knew God was a provider. Right. You see, he had already helped God and, and messed stuff up. He had already uh, stepped out of his marriage and, and fathered a child trying to help God. And God still gave him a child. Right. See, see, Abraham knew that God was a provider to those that weren't worthy to be provided for. And so he knew that God was going to provide. He was so confident that when his son asked him, where is the lamb? Yeah. He told him, God will provide. Yeah. I want you to leave here today and nothing more than let you know that God is more than a provision. Right. See, that's the problem. A lot of us think that God is a Jew, that he, we rub his belly and get free wishes. No, he is not the provision. He is the provider. And see, because of that, uh, my friend uh, Charlie Thomas, uh, some of y'all knew Charlie, Charlie just passed away. He used to run the CEDA program over in Bridgeton. He had a sign outside of his program. It said, if you give a man a fish, you give him a meal. But if you teach a man to fish, he can eat for a lifetime. Charlie Wilson, he should have taught you how to fish. <laughs> and that's so true. We always want to give a hand out instead of a hand up. And so because of that, uh, the people that we are looking to help never learn to help themselves. All right. But see here, Abraham knew that God was able to provide for himself. Some people say that Abraham uh, had no worries because he knew that God had promised him a hand. Well, I'm here to tell you that God promised you some things too. He promised he would never leave you go for safety. Why are you looking at down at the mouth talking about nobody knows the trouble you see? He promised you that you would be the head and not the tail. Why are you looking like you lost when you are a victor, not a victor? Every now and then you need to understand that he is the God who is better than anything. And I'm so glad that God has a facet of himself called Jehovah Jireh. But how many of you know that it's not merely a mental understanding that you need? See, I believe our problem is that it's only information that we have. What we need is some knowledge, yes. some under, some revelation as to who God is. When he says Jehovah Jireh to Abraham, yes. Abraham could take his only son and bound him up and lay him on an altar yes. and pick the knife up, knowing that in the next section, in the next second, he was going to put that knife through his heart. But Abraham believed that even if he had to do that, God was going to bring his child back. Why? Because God promised him. And so y'all sing the song, but do you really believe it? Do you really believe he promised him? Do you really believe he promised you? You see, when God was finished with Abraham, Abraham experienced a revelation that never left him. See, a revelation of Jehovah Jireh not only reveals what he is, but who and how he is. He is the provider. And see, the word, when you look at Jireh, it, it, it doesn't just say giver. It says that he can see in advance. God can see in advance. He can see what you need before you need it. Think about that. He can understand that you need something before you even do it. Like meeting a stranger. God knows everything about you. Why? Because he made you. We don't just have to take away the end result, but he is the provision and the provider. 
if we discover the nature of this provision, we'll understand better what it is. See, this kind of revelation won't leave us with a shallow understanding of who God is. It's when you don't really understand uh, that that's when you have a little problem. That's when you can sometimes uh, give up on God. That's when uh, your friend can come and say, oh, I don't know why you trust in that God. He, he didn't give me what, what, what he said he won't give me. But see, we need to understand that God is a perfect provider. Right. If I had to preach around the thought, that's what it would be. Perfect provider. Hey, neighbor, he's a perfect provider. <laughs> see, he's a perfect provider because he's perfect in timing. He is an on-time God. Yes, He's going to give you what you're supposed to have when you need it. Never early, never late. He's an on-time God. But he's not only perfect in his timing, he's perfect in his method. He gives it to you how you need it. You see, if, if, if you need a boat, he doesn't give you an airplane. He gives you how you need it. But he's also perfect in a supply. He always gives you just what you need. Uh, he, he's not going to give you a rock when you want bread. Right. He's also perfect not only in his timing and his method and his supply, but in his strategy. What he gives you does the job he sent it to do. You know, if he gives you bait and a hook, you can best believe that it's going to catch the fish that are out there. He's God all by himself. But this is the one I like. He's perfect in its identity. When God does it, there's no doubt who did it. That's why sometimes I get excited when God allows me to see success because I know it's only Him. But if I talk about Jehovah Jireh this morning, the first thing I want to talk about God's perfect provision, and I want you to write this down, is that God's perfect provision is prophetic. It's prophetic. It's prophetic because God can see tomorrow as if it's today. Think about it. God can see tomorrow as if it's today. Why? Because he holds tomorrow yes. too. Yeah. Yes. In, in, in verse 14, Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord it shall be seen. Jireh means to foresee. Abraham was saying this declaration because God saw it yesterday. His provision is seen today. He provides before there's even a Think about it. He knew that Abraham was going to need a ram before the ram he, that Abraham needed him. That God had to let that ram escape from the farm long before Abraham looked over there in the bush. Where did the ram come from? It just didn't automatically appear. See, a lot of people say that things in our lives are coincidental. I tell you, there's no coincidence in Christianity. All right. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. Right. And that ram, not just any ram, that ram had to be a ram without spot yes. or wrinkle. Yes. Right. And God made it so yes. even before Abraham needed it to be. And I'm, I'm so glad that he's looked down in my life and he saw needs before I even had a need. But what others may see is, uh, as chance, God is preparing a way before I needed a Savior. God knew I was going to need a Savior. And he already prepared a plan that Jesus was the perfect Savior. And I'm so glad that he did. If I look at Revelation 13, 8, it says, The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He knows what you'll need tomorrow. And he's already preparing it today. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, hey, neighbor. he got you right now. He got you right now. What you need tomorrow, he's preparing for you today. See, but you know, not only does he prepare it before you need it, 
But sometimes he even provides it before you even ask for it. How many times do you find yourself in a need and all of a sudden that need is met? You, you go to the car dealer to get your car fixed. And they always tell you, well, I got some good news and, and some bad news. Why is it always good news and bad news? He said, the good news is you got here. <laughs> but wait a minute, what's the bad news? Everything wrong is right. <laughs> And you sit there and you know that your, your budget was blown, and all of a sudden, you get a check in the mail. God will provide. Yeah. See, he knew that you were going to have a need that you didn't even know about. And he was providing. He sees a need even before it's a prayer. And I like this. God doesn't withhold his provision because we're ignorant. Yeah. See, he doesn't bless me because I've always been a good steward. I wish I could say that that was the case. But he isn't. He blesses me because he loves me. He blesses you because that's too. I believe that God can even hear tomorrow's prayers today. He is God all by himself. Don't stop praying, but know that God is already working on prayers that you haven't even issued. So God's perfect provision is prophetic. But if God's, number two, God's perfect provision is not only prophetic, it's also productive. It's productive. And God will often take us through a process that brings us the provision. See, I, I like that. He just doesn't give us the cheese. He, he sometimes makes us milk the cow. Think about it. He, he doesn't just drop a block of cheese. He sometimes makes you milk the cow. Because in milking the cow, you'll find value to the cheese. See, if he just gave you the cheese, you wouldn't see the value of the cheese. But because you milked the cow, that made the cheese, yes. now you value the right. cheese. Yes. See, sometimes he lets us know that the provision itself is not as valuable as the process. Uh, you know, I know he's given me things in my life that I have no right to, but it's because of who he knew me to be. That's why he did what he did for me. We're blessed that provision is not always the most important thing. Everything God gives us comes with a purpose. And Abraham wasn't ready for the provision until it had changed by the process. See, he had already messed up. He had already fathered Ishmael. He had already jumped ahead of God and did what he wasn't supposed to do. He wasn't going to do that no more. And see, some of us need to recognize that in our lives we've made mistakes. Don't continue. Let God work with you. Don't get ahead of him. And see, not only will our, will our, our provision be productive, but our provision will shape us as worshipers. Abraham worshiped God. You, you see, the sacrifice wasn't an act to appease God. It was an act of worship. See, when we do stuff for God, it can't be out of, oh, I got to. It's got to be sometimes just because of who he is. Are we willing to worship God before we see provision in our lives? Or do we worship the blessing instead of worshiping the blessed soul? I see so many people giving thanks for the car. How many of you thank you for the payments? How many of you thank you for the gas to go in the car? How many of you thank you for the garage that houses the car? You see, one thing we need to understand, how do you handle the lean times? 
See, that's what we need to understand. It leads us into worshipers. And I'm so glad that, that he teaches us how. And on the way to our provision, we'll also become givers. Abraham became a giver. When we're given things by God, we truly realize that it's God that's the provider. Right. Oh, I'm so excited that he is. But sometimes we're afraid to let go of what we have to get what he wants to give us. Every now and then he ain't let some stuff go. I, I looked this morning at my ties. Trying to find something to wear. And I said, it don't make no sense. I've got ties that I have never worn. Let alone ties that I had worn for five years. Hanging there. I said, you know what? That don't make no sense. You need to give someone some of those ties. How else can God bless you? if you just hold it on. Sometimes God will use his provisions to test your life. Abraham wanted a son so bad. Now God was trying to see who was more important. Some of us will go through that test sometimes. Isaac represented to Abraham the promise of future provision. Are you willing to let go what's before you to get what God has for you? I see so many of us missing our blessing because we refuse to let go of what we got. Think about it. God asked us to do, but do we? Generosity flows from those who have a revelation about Jehovah Jireh. I am so glad that that's God's perfect provision is prophetic and that it's productive. But as I take my seat, that God's perfect provision is perpetual. He's not a one-time, one-trick God. Oh, I'm so glad that he is not like man. He blesses us as often as we need to be blessed. Abraham would not leave that place until he declared a memorial to Jehovah Jireh. Not a memorial to somebody who has been. No, that's not who he did it for. He made a memorial to somebody who always would be. When we think of God, we have to think of God as always here. And that's what we need to know. His provision is eternal. And his supply is unlimited. Oh, I'm so glad that his provision is perpetual for those that trust him. Upon hearing the voice of God, Abraham heard something in the thicket. And he turned to find a ram. How significant is that? Here, God gave Abraham just what he needed. <laughs> right where he needed. Yeah. At the time that he needed. That's just like God. Some of us are busy running around trying to find God. You just be still. And he'll come to you. He is now the provision as well as the provider. I'm telling you, God is bigger than who we are. He's so big that we can't get over him. And he's so wide, we can't get around him. So deep, we can't go under him. But he's so infinite that we can't do without him. Some scholars believe that the ram was just symbol of Jesus. The spot was Calvary. 
And some 2,000 years hence, the little bit that God made available to Abraham, he was going to make available to me. In the form of a lamb, without spot or wrinkle. Jesus was that lamb. He so desired to provide a lamb for us because he, divided, he desired to provide for us the very best. He is Jehovah Jireh. At Calvary, he opened doors of provision that man has never known. At Calvary, he gave me a right to a tree of life. At Calvary, he paid the price that I could not pay. At Calvary, he gave me guarantee of future provision. And Romans tells me, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Will you trust the provider today? As I take my seat, as Elohim, he created the universe. As Adonai, he is Lord of Lords. As Jehovah Shalom, he is the peace that passes all understanding. But as Jehovah John, he's the God that meets our needs. Today I'm asking that you get to know him better. That you get to know him. That you get to know God, our provider. Amen. 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 So God, we're going to ask that if there's someone here today on the side.